Hey guys, welcome to Robin Stampin' Hood. This is Robin Scherzer, and I am doing my third stamp a stack for the season. So we did this in uh, November, and uh, some of the gals ordered kits to go. So if you don't have one, I do have one extra if you would like it, so please message me. It is $30, and then if you're distance from me, you'll have to pay a $5 shipping fee as well. But I have all the supplies to make all of these, and I do have one packet left if you would like it. So, let's get started. So this is using the, um, the Night Divine bundle, and I just love it. As a Christian, it just really spoke to me, and I'm so glad that Stampin' Up! added it to their repertoire. So this is the first card we'll make, super simple. So I was gonna start out simple so you could see. We're using Knight of Navy. Uh, Shining Brightly is the paper, along with um, some distressed gold paper, which is in the main catalog. So let's see. Let's get started. So like I said, this is a really simple, easy, it didn't look like the same size there for a second. So let's go ahead and stamp. So I'm stamping in Knight of Navy and we're stamping the big, the big words, the he shall be called wonderful counselor and mighty God. And when I have a big stamp like this, I stamp upside down or I ink it upside down just because it's easier and then I can see that I've actually gotten coverage everywhere that I need coverage. So then I'm gonna go ahead and stamp it here. Oops, <laughs> I suppose it didn't matter because I don't have it on there yet. Let's see. And then when they're this large, I make sure that I'm giving it a good push. So I'm gonna get the ink covered all the way where it needs to be. And that is absolutely perfect, yay. Okay, so that's the only stamping we're doing here. And now we're just gonna go ahead and layer everything. So again, this is Night of Navy. It's just, you know, a card, piece of cardstock cut in half. And then of course, because the card is navy, we wanna go ahead and have an inside so you can write on it. So we'll do that real quick first, because that makes a big difference. All right, that, and then let's do the outside real quick. And this is such a simple, easy, fun card. And you can see my outside here is a little bit different. Um, I use the same paper called Shining Brightly. Unfortunately, I don't believe it's available anymore. But again, I do have that one pack. Um, I have the one set of make and takes for all three of these cards and you actually make four of each of these cards. So keep that in mind if you would like to purchase that last set that I have. But all of them have a little bit different. So this one you can see it's a little bit more detailed, but I'm just going with what I got here. So let's go ahead and layer all this stuff together. Oops. And you're just framing everything out. So these uh, pieces, if you're gonna do this yourself, um, this piece, the um, the Knight of Navy is three by three and three quarters. So then the white is a quarter inch smaller. So that would be three and a half by two and three quarters. And then my Distress Gold piece and again, you can find this in the main catalog. The, <coughs> excuse me, the distressed gold piece is four inches by three and a quarter inches. So we're just gonna layer that right on top. So the, this one's a real simple, easy card, but very stunning, I feel. It just kind of makes you go, wow for something that took hardly any time to make. And then you're gonna layer that on top of that. So it's a little different looking than the sample that I have, but that's okay too. So this piece of DSP, the Brightly Shining, 
is, um, I feel like I'm a little crooked there, but I'm not. Um, that piece is four by three quarters by three and three quarters. All right. I'll just layer that right there. And frame it out. Oh, so beautiful. And then I have some ribbon that I already did my little bow, so you didn't have to painfully watch me do my bow. And I'm just going to glue dot it onto the front. And whenever I use glue dots, I actually press my project to the glue dot instead of trying to... Okay. So... There you go. I made this bow a little bit thicker than I had on that one, but I thought that was okay too. So there is the first card. Very simple, very pretty, easy. You could do easy assembly on these all day long. All right, so that's our first card. Okay, so the second card we're going to do is this card here, and it's probably my favorite. Uh, I just love how it turned out. I had a friend who did something very similar and I kind of took it from her and ran with it for my own. So I will show you real quick how, how to do this. So um, you will need the Timber 3D embossing folder. So you can see that's what's done back here. And what you want to do first is in, I use Pecan Pie, but you could use any brown that you have. I think um, Early Espresso would be fine too. It would just give it a little, you know, darker look. So before you emboss your piece, you want to stamp it with your joy in peace. Uh, otherwise, if you tried to stamp it after you embossed, it would be a little goofy. So don't do that. So through the magic television, of course, I already did that. So you can see then it's all there put together. Now, what I did is I took, this is shaded spruce, and it's from, it's from these dyes, from the, jo, the Joy of Noel dyes that are in the uh, mini catalog, which is going away. So if you like this set, uh, the Joy of Noel, that is one that is retiring. So there's the last chance list going on now that you can make sure you get those things that you want. So I've used this die here and I've cut it out a few times. Um, and what you're gonna end up doing is taking this die and cutting it this way. So you're cutting it the long, the, the long way or the horizontal way. Because if you try to do what I did here with just this, it sticks up behind it. And this way, you're just kind of layering it like this to give it that look. So I'm going to, I used actually two of these. And I'm going to cut another one horizontally like this. I say horizontally because I think it should lay like this. But who knows? I'm just making stuff up, right? So you can see, and then I'm just gonna layer some more like that. All right, does that make sense? Okay, so I'm gonna glue this all on and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I have it glued down. I tried to keep it a little flat. I know it probably is not the best that I did, but you get the idea, right? So then, um, we want to, now this paper is from the, let me guess, I have to remember what it is. Haha, <laughs> Joy of Christmas designer series paper that is in the, the, the mini catalog. So you want to go ahead and die cut out your, your little manger scene using this piece. And again, all your pieces should be in your package. If you've gotten the on-the-go kit from me, I've even gone ahead and die cut these out. But you will need, if you have the um, on-the-go kit from me, you do need to get the bundle, the Night of um, Night Divine bundle. So just keep that in mind if you want to purchase that last. But I have everything else done for you. 
Okay, so once you've cut that piece, so I went ahead and cut mine out. I put uh, mini dimensionals on the back to help pop it up. And then I'm just gonna lay it right down here. Now I probably stamped my joy and peace a little too low, but I sh or I should have moved that down there. So just keep that in mind when you're doing yours so you don't do what I did. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and finish it up. So that's obviously our main centerpiece. So I just took strips and this is very vanilla, that's thick, the thick white, and I've just cut it at four and a quarter by, by 11. And what I'm gonna do is add these strips to just behind here. So probably your best bet, but make sure if you have a kit from me, before you glue it down, make sure that you don't have anything overlapping because a lot of times when you emboss a piece, it shrinks the paper a little bit. So I think that one's okay. And let's see this one. I think, I think I'm okay there. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna lay this down along the sides first and maybe do it as a test run before you actually put glue on it. And you wanna kind of frame it out like this, right? And then you're gonna lay that on top of it to have the outside, okay? So mine, like mine is a little wide here, so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I frame it out the way it needs to be framed out. This is a great way when you don't have a lot of the same paper to save yourself some paper if you want it peeking out from your, from your card like this. And I really loved, wanted to use this and I didn't have a lot of paper. So I was like, okay, we're gonna do strips then instead of doing a whole piece to sit behind it because nobody sees that piece. They just see what you let them see. So I thought this is a great alternative to getting the look that you want. So keep that in mind when you don't always have a full piece of paper that you'd like to use like this, like a layering piece. So then I'm using a little bit more glue than I normally do because of the, the embossing. Sometimes it can be a little difficult. So I wanna make sure I'm gonna lay this down so I have a nice evenness on each side. And I think I do. And you can see where it's kind of, I'm gonna, I just messed that up, so I'm gonna push it up a little bit. See if I can get that pulled out before it sets. So what I like about glue, it's a little bit more forgiving than when you're using a tape runner. Um, I just, I messed up when I laid it down just a little bit. So mine might not look as good, but it's okay. It's okay, it's handmade, right? So mine's peeking out there a little bit. So just caution for yourself that, that you watch what that is. And then these are the adhesive back trinkets. Uh, you're not getting a full pack, but you get just enough to make these cards. And again, you're gonna make four of these uh, so you'll have 12 cards by the end of it. But I gave you enough trinkets for all of that. Uh, unfortunately, these also have sold out. So you got what you got, so that's good. So again, if you would like that last pack to make these, I have one. Like I said, you get everything in the to-go kit except for the Night Divine bundle and for the uh, timber the timber embossing folder. So if you didn't have this embossing folder, you could use something else or not use an embossing folder at all. It's totally up to you, but that is the second card. Okay, here is the last card that we are going to do. So again, you'll need the Night of Divine bundle and um, with your scrap white that I also have in there for you, there's an S on anything that is a scrap in the corner. So the first thing you wanna do is um, die cut out the, the family, right? So get them all die cut out. 
do that first. And then uh, on the piece of paper that looks like this, you are going to glue them down on it. Now keep in mind the position of any star like this that might be on it. So like for me, I would die, I would put that here. So that star is, and this is a perfect paper for that, to put that star there. Now with a circle die, mine is a, one of the stitch circle dies. It can be any kind of circle die, as long as it fits around. So glue this down to your paper, and then you're going to go back with your die cut machine and lay your circle in it. So you can see I am cutting off the edges of the paper, which is fine. Now, if your circle die is bigger, that's fine because you still have room on the card to move it. So you can do whatever you want there. But this is, I used the largest stitch circle die when I did mine. So this is what I got when I cut it out. Pretty cute, right? So let's go ahead and finish the card off. So again, we use Knight of Navy. And I'm going to fold that in half. Yay. I just love this card. Uh, in your packet, actually, you might have gotten a little piece like this, and there's no S on it. So you would put the... Um, the die cut for the family on this piece. So I apologize, I told you that wrong. But in most cases I have S's on pieces of paper that should be used as scrap to cut, to die cut stuff out. And I always have my classes to go, 90% um, of them I should say, because I'll use one suite of products and you just need to buy that suite to complete it or use what you have at home to complete it. But it's always nicer if you have it and you can do exactly what I do or change it up a little bit too. That works as well. All right, so let's go ahead before we put the top piece on. I want to go ahead and stamp it first. And I'm going to use O Holy Night. And again, that's part of that set or the sweet, I should say. So I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna just offset it a little bit because of the ribbon. So I need to grab my Knight of Navy again. Sorry about that. All right. And I'm just gonna offset it a little bit. So my ribbon has room. Perfect. And then before uh, I actually glue this piece down, I will put this down. And I should have probably been a little bit higher because you can see my, my circle's not gonna sit exactly perfect. But this is where you can always flip it over and do it again. So we're gonna do it again because I didn't pay attention to my own rules. What about that? So let's try that again. So a little bit higher and offset to the right. And that should probably do it, I'm guessing. Yep, that's much better. So now I'm not covering up any of the words. All right, uh, and then before I put that on, I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of my my little stars again, and I'm actually gonna cover that star up because it's in the perfect location and then has the, the stuff coming out, right? I don't know what you call those. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna pop this up. Make sure you're not afraid to use those dimensionals because you don't want this falling, especially with the heavy um, star on it. I'm actually also gonna put a dimensional right behind that to help support it a little bit because you do not want this collapsing on someone's mantle right so let's go ahead and pull all those off oops all right beautiful 
And again, I'm offsetting it a little bit because my ribbon's gonna run there. Now you can do one or two things with your ribbon. So say you are running short of ribbon or you cut your ribbon too small. You can do one or two things with this. Now I wanna hide the ribbon, so I don't want it coming through on the back side of my card. So you can do one or two things. You can cut as much as you need, which I believe I did cut enough for this. So let's just make sure though that I can tie it okay. I think I, think I should be okay. But if I wasn't okay, what I would do, if I had cut too short, I would actually um, put my ribbon here. And you know what, I'll just show you. I'll just show you, how about that? So if you have too short of a ribbon, you can take, like I will take my glue dots and, oops, I just stuck my finger in one. I wanna make sure I'm on the right side here. I'm gonna put one there and I'm going to put one here, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is just take the ends of my ribbon so it has something to anchor onto and I'm gonna bring it around and again, I have way too much ribbon here, which is fine. For but I just I just want to show you what you would what you would do. So I'm going to go ahead and anchor this to my base, though, because I want to to have it stable while I'm about to do what I'm about to do. And I'm going to make sure I got glue around the ribbon to hold it into place because we don't want it shifting on us. I know it looks silly right now, right? But it's okay. All right, so I'm just framing it out. I'm gonna hold it down a second because it's got, it's bulky now where that ribbon is. So I wanna make sure the glue adheres. So I'm just gonna hold it down for just a second to make sure we don't want it popping up in the middle of what we're doing. Okay. So I want the ribbon to tie closer up here. So I'm gonna pull my ribbon up to this point and kind of where I want it to tie off, I'm gonna hold it right there and I'm gonna snip it. And then again, I have too much ribbon here. This would have wrapped around just fine, but I'm just showing you what you could do if, and see, I don't have enough glue behind here. So I'm gonna go back and put more glue there because that's making me super nervous that it'll all pull apart. But I will go ahead, I'm actually gonna use a glue dot to stick back there to hold it into place. Glue dots are magical. <laughs> all right, that should do it. And then I'm gonna tie this off. And I'm just doing a knot. I'm not going to do a bow. Now, I would probably have enough uh, to do a bow, but I'm not. Unless I have my bow maker, I'm not a bow maker. So I'm just going to pull it tight. Not tight enough to break my bond on my paper, but tight enough that it's not flapping around. And then, oops, I probably cut that wrong. There you go. So there you have it. It's a little glittery. <laughs> so that is the third card that you make with my stamp -a stack So there you go. Are they not beautiful, you guys? I just love these cards and am just so pleased with this set. So I hope that you enjoy this suite as much as I do. And again, I have one pack left of to go. So you just need the Knight of Divine bundle, the stamp set and the dies, and I will supply everything else. I've die cut, cut out these uh, bows for you. Um, I've done all the cutting for you. You just stamp and die cut from the Knight Divine bundle. And that is, a it's $30 and you get envelopes to go with it too. It's $30. Uh, plus shipping if you're not local to me. So I have one left. If you like it, just message me and we'll get it all set and ready to go. Thanks for stopping by and happy stamping.